Explore the fascinating world of human sexuality as we journey across the globe in this eye-opening video. Join us on a captivating adventure as we uncover some of the most unique and surprising sexual practices from various cultures and regions. From ancient rituals to modern customs, you'll be amazed by the diversity of human experiences. This video is not meant to judge or sensationalize but to promote understanding and respect for the rich tapestry of human sexuality. So, get ready to expand your horizons and gain a new perspective on love, intimacy, and connection from around the world. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to our channel for more videos. Number 1, Sexual Cleansing In some African tribes, there is a strong belief that a woman carries the spirit of her deceased husband when she becomes widowed. This spirit is often viewed as malevolent and capable of bringing harm to the widow and her family. In order to get rid of this perceived spirit and safeguard herself, it is believed that the widow must have sex with another man, frequently a male relative of her late husband or a respected elder in the community. One of the most disturbing aspects of this practice is that it often involves coercion and the lack of consent. Widows often find themselves under immense pressure and, at times, face forced sexual encounters, which constitutes a clear violation of their rights and autonomy. This practice deprives them of the ability to choose their sexual partner and determine their willingness to participate in such activities. Number 2 PON Festival. Having sex with a stranger may seem extreme, while some cultures do it secretly, at the PON Festival in Indonesia everything is in the open. During this festival, couples gather to have sex next to a shrine on the side of a mountain. The mountain is Mount Kumyakus, located close to the village of Solo in Java. The PON Festival involves sexual rituals between strangers, even if both parties are already married to other people. These encounters are not one-off occurrences, they must meet seven times every 35th day for the ritual to be considered complete. For many centuries, pilgrims have gathered at the shrine known as Gunung Kumyakus, which coincide with the auspicious day of Jamat Pon, from which the festival derives its name. This shrine is believed to be the resting place of a 16th century prince named Pangaran Samudro, the son of a Javanese king. Alongside him rests his stepmother, Naantroulan. Various versions of their story exist, but the prevailing belief is that Samudro and Antroulan were compelled to flee their home when Samudro's father discovered their illicit affair. Their journey led them to Solo, where they met their tragic end, caught in the act by villagers and subsequently killed. In one account, Samudro is said to have sanctioned adulterous intercourse on PON Friday before his demise. Number 3, Sex with Albinos Albinism has frequently been exposed to mystification, leading to a propagation of baseless beliefs and misconceptions. One of the most troubling misbeliefs is the erroneous notion that potions or amulets prepared from the body parts of individuals with albinism possess mystical powers. This misguided belief has, in some regions, sparked a disturbing demand for such human remains. In the 21st century, numerous verified incidents underscore the extent of misunderstanding surrounding albinism, particularly in African communities. Among these misconceptions is the false belief that engaging in intimate relations with a person with albinism can cure a man of HIV. Tragically, this misconception has significantly contributed to the spread of the virus. Albinos, particularly in countries like Malawi, are being hunted for their body part, because of the superstitious belief that their body part has magical power to cure deadly diseases. Number 4 potency test. In numerous African cultures, aunties often assume a role of providing guidance and support to their young nieces as they transition from adolescence to adulthood. However, among the Banyan Kol people residing in southwestern Uganda, the aunt's role within the context of marriage goes beyond conventional counseling. The main duty of the aunt in this community is to confirm if the bride has defended her virginity and that the groom is potent before the marriage is consummated. 
the ant was occasionally required to have sex with the groom as a potency test for the groom to confirm his virility. Before they could marry, she also had to test the bride to see if she was still a virgin. This is to guarantee their efficacy. During this performance, the ant acquires a comprehensive understanding of the groom's sexual preferences and techniques. This knowledge equips her to offer invaluable advice to her niece concerning her husband's sexual desires, ultimately contributing to a more harmonious and fulfilling marital relationship. Number 5, Wife Stealing In spite of the pervasive influence of modernity in many parts of Africa, some cultures continue to strongly stick to their long-held customs and traditions. The Wodabi Wife Stealing Festival in Niger, West Africa, stands as an interesting example. While some people love this practice, others who do not entertain the idea of their wives going to some people dislike it. Once a year, the Wodabi tribe has a festival called Gerwol, during which the men dress elaborately, apply meticulous makeup, and hold some sort of beauty pageant. The main goal of the festival is for these men to dress to impress other men's spouses. With this festival, if a man successfully steals a wife without being caught, their union is officially recognized, and he becomes her rightful husband. It's important to note that this practice is easy because polygamy is widely acceptable within the community. Number 6, Love Huts. In the Kriang tribe of Cambodia, it is tradition for parents to build a little hut for their daughter away from the main house, like setting up a small apartment in the room over your parents' garage. Except the Kriang tribe's love huts serve a different purpose, it allow teenage girls to have all the sex they want without their parents having to witness it. This may sound like a recipe for unplanned pregnancies and broken hearts, however the Kriang tribe of distant northeastern Cambodia believes that this is the best method for their daughters to find true love. When Kriang girls reach mid-teens, their parents build them their love huts and encourage them to have different boys to spend the night with until they find someone they want to marry. Number 7, Sex for Guest The Himba tribe, also known as the Ova Himba, is an indigenous people residing in northern Namibia, with an estimated population ranging from 20,000 to 50,000 members. Within this tribe, the act of engaging in sexual relations is viewed as a gesture of warm hospitality. In the practice, the man must plead with the woman to remove her ornaments one by one and must as well return them intact after the act. According to reports from The Guardian, when a visitor arrives and knocks on the door of a Himba household, the man of the house expresses his approval and joy by offering his wife to the guest for the night, while he retires to a neighboring room. In instances where there is limited lodging available, the husband may choose to sleep outdoors. This tradition is believed to reduce feelings of jealousy and promote stronger relationships within the tribe. 